Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the one-handed mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. We have here a Arians Compact 24. It is a 10 horsepower, 24 inch, self-propelled, two-stage snow thrower. And I'm gonna show you today how to start it and operate it. The first thing you wanna do is make sure you check the oil here. Okay, you just pull it out, um, unscrew it. You're gonna check it, wipe it off a few times. It should be between those two dots, all right? gasoline in here it is a four cycle engine so you're going to put straight gas uh, high octane if you can unleaded absolutely and if you have non-ethanol it's even better okay down to the controls here to start it we have right here is the electric starter okay now i'm going to show you that in a minute but we also have a fuel shutoff which a lot of these do not have and this is nice when they're working but i have come across a lot of these fuel shutoffs that actually don't work all right so straight up and down is off and when you want to run it, you're going to turn it to the right, and that is in line with on. And then you have to remember over here, we have the primer bulb here, which they say is the instructions here, prime two or three times. They don't even say it here, but I would definitely prime it two or three, possibly four or five times, depending on how cold it is outside. And you do have the choke knob up here. And when it says start, that's exactly what it means. Put it up on start, and that means it's closed. And that means you're getting the full choke, okay? And then when it's ready to run it, after it starts, you're gonna take it back to run. All right, now sometimes you do have to compensate and leave them on like half choke while they're warming up in very cold conditions. This, this machine here only goes up to full speed. I don't like the fact that it does because in real cold conditions, the carburetors are not warmed up and they need a little bit more choke on till it warms up and everything expands inside the carburetor. Okay, so this is the ignition switch and it's just on and off so you have to make sure you turn it on i don't know what they're saying about locked and uh, unlocked but it's not the point the point is on is to the right when you're in line here off is like this so you have to make sure you have the key in the right way i would probably suggest putting on over here and off up here make sure it's on all right as far as starting it goes this is the pull rope here we're going to start it real quick for all you guys out there i just want this thing to run and this is a uh, how to start and operate but i'm going to start it right now so what you gotta do is make sure the fuel is on we're going to make sure the choke is in start make sure the key is on i'm going to prime it three times one two three I'm gonna give it a pull or two, and as soon as it starts up, I'm actually gonna turn it off because this only goes up to full speed and you will not be able to hear me. So I was adjusting that choke a little bit just for you out there. This is, I'm probably at 40 degrees in the shop here and we didn't need a whole lot of choke, but I guarantee when you're out there starting this for the first time in very cold conditions that you probably will need to compensate with that choke on. You just have to remember once it warms up to take that choke off. All right, so now I'm gonna show you as far as the electric start goes, the cord, the cord that you use for this, I'm pretty sure they don't give you cords anymore with the machines, but you don't wanna extend your cord over probably about 10 feet, just because the starters do draw. These starters is right, this is a starter right here, and they draw a lot of amperage. I would suggest, just remember to use the cord this thick. So the starter cord that goes to your push button here, starter, just use a cord about that thick, and you'll be fine. Don't go over 10 feet, and basically it's just plug and play. You're gonna plug it into your outlet, and plug it into your starter. Definitely uh, just your house current, 110, 120, whatever you have. Plug it in. Now, same thing with everything starting up. Turn the key on, choke on. Now, since we just ran this thing, I'm not going to push the primer. Uh, the fuel is on. All you have to do is push this button in until it starts and then let go. And then you just have to remember to make it just just remember to go from choke on to choke off if you have to compensate use a half choke when you're ready to go make sure you unplug your extension cord and now we're going to come up to the controls in the controls right here we have this is a little bit different than a lot of them your auger drive is actually on this side okay so that's for your augers in the front your left one is your drive for your self propel you have forward and reverse speeds here. Okay, you have two reverse speeds and you have six forward speeds. You can start in whatever and you can actually um, 
I'm pretty sure you can you can move while you're you can move these while you're going. But just uh, if you have any questions, just you know stop the machine and put it in different gears. But I'm pretty sure you can actually move. We'll we'll fire it up and we'll run it to make sure that we can actually move into forward gears by the handle while we're still moving. Right here is your chute tilt. It's up and down. It's in the front there, you can see it's up and then down just for uh, where you're shooting, this, where you're throwing the snow at. And below that right here is your left and right on your chute. Now, you hear that? That is, this is very stiff and it's not very happy. So what we're gonna do is, I would suggest using silicone, which is another part of this video, is that silicone spray right here. We spray this in and around your chute right here and also your augers you spray it all around in there now what i'm going to try to do is i'm going to try to spray this up underneath right here this is where the gear is for that and i'm pretty sure these gears are plastic so we're going to try and don't be afraid to just silicone everything up now as you can see right here these are the shear pins for the for the augers let's go down in the augers and we'll show you what the shear pins go okay so you have a shear pin here and as you can see right here, this is actually a grease fitting. It's good to grease the shaft just in case you ever need to take these things apart or in case that a shear pin shears. You don't want to have these. These, these shafts are supposed to be a little bit loose on the shaft that's on the inside and they can freeze up through moisture, water, of course. They're in snow all the time. They can actually seize from the auger to the shaft and you won't be able to get these things off and you won't be able to move the shear pins very easily. So grease. if you have a grease zerk fitting on the end of your shaft here, make sure you pump it up at least two to three pumps a year. And the, the other Zerk fittings on this fitting, I'm sorry, the other shear pin is on this side and there's a Zerk fitting over here. So you have two Zerk fittings for grease. You have two shear pins. And like I said, the shear pins up here, or right here. And let's see if this got a little bit quieter when I turn it left and right. Oh, much better. There you go, nice and easy too. So remember that if you have it real stiff going left and right, just spray some silicone spray up and under here. And that'll help that out. And then obviously when you're before you're going out to to uh to blow snow, spray in here. And silicone spray. This will really help the snow from sticking. And then in here. Just like that. And then you'll be good to go. Now you have to do you have to uh reapply that every time it snows and okay, make sure you try to reapply it when it's dry don't try to do it when there's snow on it won't help any let's go back to the handles again i want to show you just one feature that this does have here um when you put the auger down and you put the drive down and you let go of the auger the auger handle does stay down and the reason why it stays down is because they don't want you running forward and once you have the auger in it actually will keep the th the auger throwing snow and as soon as you let go of the handle it's designed to keep everything flowing the snow coming out the chute i recommend if you can hold this handle down all the time then you'll always have like everything will be out of your machine and you won't have a clog this is to help no clogs it literally it also gives you a one hand opportunity that you can do other stuff but i'm pretty sure that they they want you, they want this down while you're driving and if you take your hand off of this you know, or if you take your hand off of this one it'll just stop everything in motion but i'm pretty sure it's to help keep it clear keep the auger spinning to keep it clear i would suggest keeping your hand on the auger when you let go of the drive and allow it to just come out make sure that every little bit of snow is out of that auger before you let go of the auger handle to keep it from clogging if you let go of the auger handle and you're still driving you have a good chance of packing the snow in there and then when you hit your auger handle, and let's just say a minute or two goes by and that froze up inside there, you can break a belt. So just recommendations to keep the auger on at all times if you can. And then when you're driving, just make sure when you let go of the drive, if you can keep this on for a couple more seconds, just to let everything go out. If you ever see snow not coming out your chute, you definitely want to stop everything and you probably have a clog. So keep that in mind because it's a wear and tear on the belts and you can break belts pretty quickly. There is a light on here, and I also wanted to show you guys if this thing will go move forward and backward as we are moving forward. So I'm going to start it up. I'm going to try to move the, uh, the gears forward and backward while we're operating just to see if it moves okay. 
choke on, starter on, fuel's on. Try to get a little bit of prime. to the right and swerving to you know backwards here i just found out that um this machine is in here for a no start condition but as you can see in the front here where the wheel is you see that clip ring right there this clip ring right here this is designed so you can push these easily when it, like it, it, it'll turn very easily there's no positive traction that's for when you're not blowing snow so you can take this pin out of this hole here and it'll give you a, like a non posi traction so it'll turn easy. Then you have to line the holes up with the tire and there should be two holes. The ones on the outside is for freewheeling, the one on the inside is for lock-in mode. Now you should have posi traction and it makes it a little bit rough to, to turn it, but you can still turn it. Okay, so now we're gonna try to move forward and backward and go in a straight line, because now we're going to traction. Again, turn the key on, choke on, I'm gonna prime it one push, fire up. shift gear lever while you're operating especially me with one hand everybody with two hands i'm sure you're gonna have a better grip on it you can actually move this while you're running uh if this thing goes so fast i would recommend just stopping and just putting it into a gear that you like and just go from there um, but pretty much you know that's it okay so that pretty much sums it up for how to start and operate a compact 24 a couple of extra tips in there to help you guys out as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends about my channel. If you have any comments, please leave them below, and I will catch you on the next one.